The use of color in Photoshop is remarkable because you can do on the computer what artists have been trying to do for centuries with paintbrush and canvas and whatever painting devices you want. So let's look at a few color things that are out here to uh, deal with. I've got uh, my page set up here with a 5 by 7 I've got a gray background, I've got a blue rectangle, I've got a brown rectangle, and I've got a tan rectangle. And the way you can <clears throat> determine the color of something is that you, um, if I wanted like this tan one, if I select the tan one, I have to go to the, the tan layer and select it with my uh, magic wand. If I want to change the color, <clears throat> I'm going to come here to the foreground color and click on it, it, it comes open gray, and I want to say I want a little more orangey tan than that. So I select that color. And like I say, the colors here, the whites in the left and blacks in the lower left and the pure color of this particular line on the color bar is right there, that orange. And then down here is orange with black added, which makes it pretty much black. But there's dark orange and gray orange and mid ranges. So once I find one that I, I prefer more, I can hit OK. That now sits here in the foreground color and I've trapped that uh, bar, the tan bar, the option key and the delete key puts the foreground color into that uh, bar. The command key and the delete key, I'm using my left hand with my thumb and finger to get those happening, puts the background color there. But I'm command, or option key, delete, I want the foreground color there. Okay, now <clears throat> I've got this, uh, there's, a, there's a guideline of the three and a half because it's a seven inch uh, uh, document seven by five command D I take the marching ants away now I want to chop these things off when I laid these in there I was careful to put them with you know one color touching the other but um, I'm, I want to make sure that the lengths all the same so I've made them uh, I've got an inch margin on each side coming in and I, I've made them all uh, a little longer than an inch margin now if I take my marquee tool and I make a marquee that comes right up against that blue line. And there's a sort of a snap quality to that. Uh, when you go to view, well, it snaps not on, but it, it kind of snaps to that line. It, it recognizes the line and is there. Now, uh, if I go to the blue layer and I hit delete, everything inside that marquee is going to delete. And if I go to the brown and hit it, everything inside that right there is going to delete. And if I go to the tan, delete. Now I take that space and I move it over to the other side and set it up against that guideline and go to the same drill. Blue, delete. Brown, delete. And tan, delete. And then if I click inside of it, it goes away. Once I have my layout taken care of, I will come back up here and get my um, guidelines and take them away just so that I don't have them cluttering them up, up the page. Now, I can leave them there and look through them. It, it, it doesn't matter, but uh, sometimes you say, well, I want to see what I'm, I'm looking at. Okay, so if you have other color issues, remember that uh, the color picker is, is what you get when you open it up and you start looking at, uh, at what's going on. You can open in Windows the color palette, and that gives you what we were looking at in Illustrator, the color, the swatches, and the swatches, a few more swatches here in, in your greens and blues and browns and stuff. And then styles, uh, I stay away from this as much as you can because it's, it's a little too controlling. You know, you say, well, look, I can make a, uh, let's make another uh, layer here and just call it uh, test. I just hit this little button down here and I made a new layer. Make it spell right. Now, watch, I can bring in... Um, a rectangle and say, all right, I want that rectangle to have this uh, this style right here, bingo. And um, well, let's see, what am I going to do? Just drag it over there. Mm -hmm. Bonk. Well, it's going to go in the big one. I'm not sure why it's going in the big one and not the little one. Um, at any rate, these. Um, Let's see. Let's back up on that. Remember history? What, what you're looking at is this pattern right here is a pre-made pattern. It sets in and it puts a bevel on it and a shadow on this bevel and a highlight on the other bevel. 
and they're they're really designed to make buttons for a website. You know, where you have different pages and you want to have different buttons. Uh, I'm not really sold on that unless I have to sit down and make a lot of buttons. But that's what that style is for. Now, if I go to history and say, um, let's back up to history. Um, you see, there's uh, deselect and let's go to that rectangle marquee. See, I'm in test right there, and uh, I'm still not sure why they didn't just go in there and fill that button. Well, I'm not going to worry about it at the moment. But um, styles I wouldn't get too close with. But swatches, yeah, if you want to. I prefer the color picker. Uh, you Here you have the color bars, but notice you don't have the CMYK. You have RGB because Photoshop... It doesn't try to be the printer's friend as far as CMYK language. It uses RGB. That's why I'm not real fond of that. And I'll just go here and, and find the color I want. You know, you want a, a really nice lime green, get in there and find it. and Or grayish, greenish gray or whatever. You get used to this after you use it for a while. But uh, that helps you get that to, to work. Now, let's talk about gradient color. Let's say I wanted this blue. I'm going to go back to that blue layer. And I wanted that blue to be a gradient color. Uh, here is the gradient tool. And if I click on that, you see the last gradient color I made is showing up up here in this uh, menu box up on top. And I'm going to click on the menu box and it opens up and shows me the last gradient I made. Okay, I'm not so f fond of those colors. So I'm going to uh, make my own colors. Now, Let's say I want a gradient that uh, had the same three colors as this one. I'm going to select the first layer, take my uh, or eyedropper tool, and click here and watch what happens. That color shows up right there in that box. Let's go to the second box and select it. I'm going to go to my color picker and go to the brown box, and it shows up right there. And uh, to get rid of a paint bucket, you just pull it away, and it goes away. Now this last color, I'm going to... Come over here and pick on the blue. Bonk. Now, you can make up your colors. I just use those colors because there are three of them there. You can move this around so that it makes a nice smooth transition from light to medium to dark. You can add more colors if you want to and, and, and uh, make that work for you. If you want another color, just uh, hold the option key down, take an active box, and just you make an, or bucket, make another bucket. Now, it's the same color, so I click on this, click, click. I get the color picker, and it says, uh, I'm going to move this other way. Let's see, I want it to be not this dark and not that light, so I'll go over here in the middle someplace. And you see it's going from here to this brown color. Not quite so, and I OK that. And there's that. And then the brown, between the brown and the blue, uh, I might want to have some other color, but not really. I want my colors... Usually your colors go from light on the left to dark on the right. Okay, let's say this works for me. By the way, here's some pre-made uh, colors up here. and I, I tend, again, not to use them because I don't like the dark and the light and the dark and the light. It looks like a Navajo blanket. But, okay, I'm going to okay, okay that. And there's that color. Now I have to select the blue and uh, with a magic wand tool. Now it's selected. And now I'm going to put uh, come back here with my gradient and that color still there I'm using a, the I'm hitting the button here for the linear this is the button for the radio okay and I'll just click from the left remember light was on the left so I'm gonna start with the light color and drag it across to the other side and it fills itself in with uh, the light to the medium to dark to blue and it's, it's it's the equivalent of airbrushing now if you don't like that command uh, Z takes it back. Let's let's go up to that test uh, uh, layer that I made before, and I'm going to make. A, uh, let's go with a round shape back there. Now it's going to be in the foreground because I'm um, I've got it on the high level here. I can move that around a bit. But first of all, I'm going to go to the um, gradient tool, and there it shows up up there. I'm going to take the radio and I'm gonna click where the hot spots gonna be because lights on the left starts with light and click to there and I get a bluish brownish blue uh, ball as if the reflection of something blue was reflecting back up into the 
into the brown. If you don't want to see the blue, just pull it a little further and the blue will actually end up on the outside of the circle and you'll only have the light to medium to dark brown. All right, now let's uh, take test and put it um, behind the blue. And so when I come inside here with my arrow, now I can hit just Command D and take off the marching ants. I get, um, I'll turn off the transform so I'm not seeing the um, bounding box, but now I'm getting the gradial, the gradient colors in a, in a radial form on that ball in the background. So that's using the linear or the uh, uh, radial to make that work. Now let's take another instance where I've got a picture here of a farm all tractor that's pretty well uh, restored. It's an older tractor. It's well restored, painted, cleaned up pretty good. It's in a parking lot in front of a, a pretty classy looking building and there's other tractors there like we're having a tractor show. But I want to I want to deal with that uh, so that I can work with it. Now here's the, the result of cutting the, uh, the tractor out and the way it's cut out is that you, you virtually do go in and cut it out and you cut away all the background and I even put the shadow down. Now the shadow is on its own layer See that? It's on this, I'm turning the shadow layer on and off. I can turn the shadow on and turn the tractor off. And you can see that I'm, uh, there's the um, tractor all by itself. Now, how that works is that if I take this tractor, I processed it through uh, photo imaging, and my image size is 7 by 5, whatever. I hit 7 width, and when the 5 comes up, wherever it comes, you know, what number. And then I change the resolution to 400. Now, the way you process this, and we'll see more of this down the road, but um, I'm going to put another layer here and put that layer behind. And then I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to find a really strong orange color. And I, I like orange because it's, it's um, you can see it pretty well. There it sits in the foreground color over here. Option delete puts that orange in the background. Now, to process this uh, tractor, uh, I go back to that layer. And I do two things. Once I made a, a quick cut where I just come around the trailer or the tractor and I, I quickly cut out close but not exactly on all of the uh, where I'm going to actually come back and trim to the actual tractor. And when I close that up, I'm on the tractor layer and I hit the delete and uh, that part goes away. Now don't cut away the shadow. Of this tractor there's a shadow of the other tractor over here that you don't need to worry about but I'm not gonna uh, let's see let's get this done right here start outside and I'm gonna come in and, and be very careful of the tractor shadow that I'm working with and then uh, come over here now the, the this wheel is from the other tractor and so is the shadow and I come up around here now don't cut out anything that's important on the tractor the the exhaust pipes going out of the picture. I might have to come back and round that out. So I've got a quick cut. Now there will be a layer that I'll put here and under the tractor and I'll call that layer the shadow. And uh, if you're doing something where a shadow is important, a tractor, a car, a person, then take your magnifying glass and come in here very tight. And with, uh, I'm going to make the shadow black for now and I can make it transparent so it's not quite as dark. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but I'm going to start out here where the tire is and locate the shadow and uh, the shadow and the tire and, and the, how it lays on the pavement. I'm just going to cut that around and follow what, what the shadow is actually doing. And that gives me then a pattern of the tire. Don't go with the leaves, but I want the pattern of the tire because those little luggy nucky rubber things on it that stick out. And uh, you follow it around. Now, it, it closed on me automatically. I was going to continue, but I was going to say, okay, command black uh, on the shadow. I'll turn the tractor off and you can see up oh, there it is. Now it jumped in on me. So I'm going to continue with it, this and fill it out. And I'm not going to go on the axle. I'm just going to go around the tractor. And um, when I get back to the tractor, then I'm going to come over here and I'm, I'm going to merge these two together. I'm going to have two black things, obviously. And when I go take the tractor out and hit black, uh, the option 
delete uh, that fills in the in, in that shadow that would be there uh, where the tractor showing now when I get all through then of course the shadow is built and I trace carefully around the the uh, shadow here I even cut out these little holes that are in that back bar to put uh, bolts and trailer hitches to and all this other stuff even the front shadow I, I make a very careful collection of that to make that work now the the actual cutting out of the uh, the tractor, this this takes you some time, get a little close to it, and and there's no other way to do this but to take the time to do it right. I use the polygonal lasso tool. I come in and I clip like I'm going to the steering wheel, and then I just carefully with uh, this isn't a curved line, so if you're on a curve, go with short straight lines, and you click down here until you get to uh, elements that you know are the edge of the, uh, uh, in this case, the tractor. And you're coming around and um, clicking away. If it's a glare or a gleam off of something, just sort of clip through it. Now, in some places, it gets very complicated. Like there's a spring this thing sits on. And sometimes you have to just take the time to go around all the shapes that are showing. In this case, the spring goes right around back and into the stem of the... Um, uh, thing that holds supports the seat. Now I'm going to come out here and close back up. Just take little bites. Don't try to do the whole tractor all at once or you're going to run into grief. So I hit the, the uh, I'm going to be on the tractor layer and I hit the delete and it cuts that part away. And you virtually go all the way around the tractor and make that work for you. Where the, where the tractor comes up here to this um, metal uh, cross arm, there's a bit of a glare on it. I'll just cut through the glare. I'm not going to go the whole way around, but I take that out on this side, and then, and then when I come back on the inside here, I just straighten that down, and, and then I come back and cover the nuts, the bolts, and everything else that's up there. And I'll just close that out real quick, and you can see if, uh, if that isn't going to work for me, then I'll take my uh, cloning tool and get it much smaller than 200, very small, maybe that 13 works, and come up here and take... Uh, option key and click right on the red and white where the there's a red and pink going on there the pink part is the reflection come up here a little higher click on that spot right there then come down aim it and then paint with red and pink through there and maybe do it one more time to, to comp get the glare out of the way and as careful as you do that it works out the same thing with the glare on the seat here i can just take some of this red and come down through here and and um fill it in like that. Maybe I even come back with my brush and straighten that out so it doesn't look like it's been bent or dented or something. Okay, so you do that and you go all the way around and you have um, the uh, picture then disappears and the tractor remains. Now, here's the tractor already cut out and you can see there's the shadow now, I don't have to have the shadow where, where the tractor wheels and stuff are, but where the wheels are showing up, and this is through the wheels. You see shadow through the wheels. When I put that back there, you can see some shadow there and some shadow there, but this is picking up all of the shadow, all of the part of the tractor. I, I came back in here and cut the top of the, rounded the top of this uh, exhaust pipe too, so it would, uh, it was leaving the picture flat, and actually it's going to be a little bit round. Now, you can see I have a background here that is, uh, the just flat orange. I made another background <clears throat> that is has the colors of uh, of the tractor. I took the uh, dark. I took dark out of the inside here where it's painted red but dark. That's this color. I took this color on the cowling for this red. I took a little orange just to mix with the red and a light tan. So if I go there and I say, all right, what is my gradient? Um, going to look like uh, this is the last one I made let's see um, let me, I don't think I saved that I wish I had saved that when I made it no, I didn't but um, here's how that's, that works out let me, let me make a whole other layer here and, and go through that process again I'm going to turn off the other layers that are there and say uh, alright I'm going to open up my um, bar here and um, 
let's shorten it down just a little bit if I can. Well, maybe not. It's a big palette. Okay, this first one is a light tan. I'm going to leave that light tan. The second one, I need it to be an orange. So I click on that and come down here and find a, a pleasant orange. Now the third one, I click on that. See, that's the active paint bucket that's black on the top. I take my color picker, and I'm going to take right off the, the side of the hood here, that red. And it shows up there. Now the last one, which was blue, I'm going to take this and make it active. And come in here and get this dark red that's almost a brown. Um, that's in the shadow of, of everything is painted red there. Okay, so I have light to medium to dark, uh, light to orange to red to that color, and I'm gonna say okay, and that color shows up right there. I come to this layer, and uh, I've got an orange background. I gotta put a color in there of something, so I'm gonna use the Command Delete and put the orange in there, and then take my gradient tool, make sure that I've got a linear and start at the bottom where it's light, light it starts first, and then drag it up towards the top and keep my line straight so go, the color goes straight up. And I get that background that has the red fading to orange, fading to tan. And that gives it a, a pretty good look. There, there's not, nothing back there. There's no shape other than the tractor and the, sh and the, and the trailer and, and the shadow. Um, I could go, um, let's go to this other, color I had here which is pretty much the same thing and but this time let's put on that layer I'm going to turn off this layer and I'm showing this layer that's the same colorization but this time I'm going to use that gradient and start with uh, a radial I'm going to put right here on the steering wheel and drag it out towards the wheel and it's going to go to the radial see it gives it that sort of bright effect right there in the wheel or maybe I'll try it over here in this corner of the trailer and come back the other way uh, any number of effects are going to work. Uh, you could come a little higher and come shorter, and then it's a real bright flash, and then it gets lesser as it comes out. So whatever dramatics you're after, you can play that game. So you can see there's the layer that has the uh, linear. I turn that off, and you see the gradial. And if I turn that off, you're going to see just a straight background. So the gradient works in a number of places where you make a shape and and uh, use your airbrush effects to your best uh, use. Here's a final thing where I'm putting the trailer together, or the tractor together on it. Let's say it's a book cover, and it's about Farmall, the tractor, International Harvester tractor uh, line called Farmall. And it's a, a picture of that tractor, and see, it's kind of in the shade here. You can see the shade around it some lights coming through that might have lit up the hood a little bit. I've made the shadow uh, much dark, much lighter by going to the shadow and see up here the opacity. You'll hit that button and you can make the opacity range that's at 20 percent. See if I bring it up it gets darker. But there's not going to be a very dark shadow in that shade area so I'm going to keep it at a low number so that uh, it's there but it's not overwhelmingly dark like it would be if it was out in the main sun. Uh, I've got the word tractors that um, uh, farm the West, and this is the text tool. We'll talk more about text, but I just go to the text tool and select. I selected impact. In this case, it was 24 points, and I centered it, and I made it red. The same red, I just went and got the red off the hood, the cowling here of the tractor, and that's the red, and I typed it in and centered it, the uh, tractor. And then I uh, put the word, the bigger one, the farm all, uh, it's centered and it's behind. You see that the, the um, tractor is in front of farm all, in front of the, the picture of the cabin. And so the, the smokestack sticks up a little bit into the farm all. There's a few other color things that you can deal with. For example, the farm all, whoops, has a, um, there's some filters on the bottom here in Photoshop. And if I go to the farm all level and I say, filter, show me this with a bevel and emboss. And it's going to put uh, on that uh, farm all, see it's giving you some beveling, which means it's uh, got some lights and shadows. The light in this case is coming from the upper right. I'm going to move this over, and now it's coming from the upper left. And the picture is showing me a white highlight and a, and a, and a black. I'm going to go to the white and make it uh, sort of that reddish but very light reddish or, uh, color 
that would be the highlights. And then the black, I'm going to go to that red of the tractor and just make it a, a darker brown. Not, not black, but a brown. Matches more of what the color would look like. Okay, now I'm going to say here the size of that bevel can get you know really thick and thin. And uh, I'm going to make that uh, do a little bit of a... Until you get it how, how rounded you want it to be. And the depth is uh, how dark or how far the darkness creeps into the, to the letters. So it makes it more three-dimensional. And one other thing I could do, I could add one more effect and go to here to the drop shadow. And the line's coming from the top. And uh, it's got a black shadow to it. I, I think that's going to work. If there was a blue or an orange background, I'd make it a dark orange or dark blue. But uh, I have to put this, the, the distance that's going to come. You can say how far that shadow is going to happen. And the spread, uh, how much uh, um, the line is not a sharp thing there. And then the size really muffles the, the shadow. And I prefer that in a case like this because there isn't a wall back there on which the shadow is going to be reflected. The shadow is just helping to give it a little more uh, definition. The shadow itself helps to block out from... Uh, the uh, background color and foreground color. Now there's there's a lot of other filters in here that you can go practice with and or read about in the textbook or we'll look at down the road. But um, that's where that comes from. You see the effect here. I've got the drop shadow on the farm all word only and the bevel and emboss. I'm not going to do it down here in the bottom because uh, the letters are too thin, especially for a bevel. I could put a drop shadow on it by Here's the drop shadow I put in the farm all. If I hold the option key down and grab that dro drop shadow and take it up to tractors that farm to west, it puts that same uh, effect on these letters down below. And then see how it sort of frames them out a little bit better. There's only one thing. If the letters are really small, I'm going to open that drop shadow. And uh, where it says size, I can back it off just a little bit so it's not as big a shadow as the big letters have, but it's still there. And when I get through with that, I okay that, and then I've got the, the farm all thing working. So this is the end result. I've taken a, a picture of um, a um, cabin, and in fact, the grass stopped right here. And I took my, my uh, cloning tool and just picked up grass and kept putting it down here until there was more grass. Then I added the uh, tractor and the shadow to the tractor, and then the... Uh, the words uh, across the bottom, the subheadlines of this book, and then the uh, title across the top. So, color isn't just selecting and making shapes and stars and circles. It's it's using the color that's there to your advantage. Finding the red and making that go in the letters. Finding the shadow and letting it be transparent, so that it uh, isn't as hard a shadow as you would find, perhaps out in the in the direct sunlight. So there's more and more and more things that we do with color, but these are a few things I want you to see and practice on these images or on your own images and um, get the feel for Photoshop color as, as soon as you can and learn as much as you can.